Okay, so we've opened Premiere Pro CS6 and we're ready to go, but the interface looks very different. One of the big changes you'll see is that the project panel, which used to be up here in CS5.5, is now down here and has been completely redesigned. Let me just show you CS5.5, and you'll see that here's the project panel. Firstly, we have a little preview window at the top, and here are the items down here, and we have two options. We have list mode and icon mode. Now icon mode is often referred to as the storyboarding mode because you can shift items around so that they're going to be in the right place for however you want to do your story. So that's often the storyboarding mode and we often worked in list view. Whereas you will find if we go back to CS6 that actually you still have list view and icon view but quite often we're going to be working with the icon mode and also we've got no preview window at the top. Now at the moment I haven't brought anything in and if you want to use the preview window, you can still get to it through the panel menu just here. So you can go to the panel menu and you'll see that it says preview area and we can preview things up here. However, with CS6, you're gonna find that you use this less and less because of the way that the project panel has been redesigned. So I'm actually gonna turn off the preview area. So let's have a little look. Let's actually import some footage. Now you can do it a number of ways. Now. It's just worth saying at this point, if you're going to be a serious editor and do lots of video editing, you're going to actually find that using the keyboard is the way that you want to work. You don't really want to use the mouse because going over to the mouse, grabbing the mouse and then having to double click something or go file import or whatever you want to do, you're going to find that it's going to be a lot quicker to learn your keyboard shortcuts. Now all your keyboard shortcuts are shown through your menus. So you can see here, for instance, save is control S, as it would be in a standard document. Save as, control shift S, and in Mac, that's gonna be command S or command shift S. But you can see here, import is control I or command I on a Mac. Another way of doing it is to double click in the gray area in your project panel, and then you can actually navigate to your footage and choose which bits of footage you want to bring into your project. So I'm just gonna bring in a couple of pieces of footage, just for example, kids playing in surf and to be able to choose two separate items you would use the control key on a PC the command key on the Mac and then you can select whichever items you want just by clicking on them however if you want to select a range you choose your first item and then you hold the shift key and you select the end item and that selects all the items in a range if you then want to get rid of items hold the command key or the control key on a PC and then you can click on items to deselect them so I'm going to choose kids playing in surf and another one up here which is called boat into harbour. Hold the command key or the control key on a PC, click open and in they come. Obviously the quickest way of doing that would be control I or command I to be able to get these in. Now the first thing to say is that these items in your project panel are going to behave very differently to how they did in previous versions. Now we've still got the list view where you've got your items in a list if you find that helpful. But when we go to icon view or storyboard view as it's sometimes known, you'll see that when you take your mouse over a clip and you start to drag your mouse over it without clicking on it, I'm not clicking on it, I'm just dragging it, you'll see that the clip is actually moving. Now, I'm going to maximize this particular screen and one of the keyboard shortcuts in Premiere Pro to maximize the screen is to use the tilde key or the accent key. Now, for different keyboards, it works in different ways. Um, on a standard keyboard, US keyboard, I believe it's the key above the tab key would maximize the frame. For some other keyboards, it might be the hash key to the left of the enter button. And I'm on a UK keyboard. I actually find it's the apostrophe button, which is just above the, the, the question mark button on my keyboard that maximizes the screen. Now, at the bottom of the panel, we've got a little slider. And when you pull this little slider, it just makes all the icons that much bigger. And you still get the hover scrub, as it's known, hover scrub effect. So as I go over this item with my mouse and start to pull, you can see that I'm scrubbing through the clip, hover scrubbing. If I go over this one here, I'm also hover scrubbing just by pulling my mouse over the clip. 
not only can you go backwards and forwards through a clip, you can actually even choose in points and out points. So let's say I want it to be the in point just before the man comes around the corner. You'll see just up here the man will come around the corner. So let's say that's my in point. So what I'm doing now is defining the bits of the clip that I want to use in my project. What I'm saying is I don't really think I'm going to use any of this footage all the way up to when the man starts to come around the corner, which is there. I don't think any of that previous footage I'm going to use. So what I can do is say from this point is my beginning point. Hit I for in point and then go till I get to where I think my out point should be, which is just about there past the castle. Get that little wave over the side and hit O for out point. Now I've actually selected an in point and an out point on the clip, but I can't see it, I hear you say. Click on the clip and you'll see that there's my in point and my out point. I've still got a playhead I can play between, but I've specified which bit of the clip I want to use by just going I and O while I was hover scrubbing, which saves an awful lot of time. Previously, I would have double clicked the clip to get it open in the source panel and chosen my in point and my out point there. But by hover scrubbing, I can actually choose my in point and out point right here in the project panel. Now that clip's got an in point and an out point specified. And I simply did it by getting to the beginning that I wanted to get to, hitting the I key for in, and getting to the point where I wanted to finish, and hitting the O key for out. And if you got it wrong, say I want to finish nearer to this point here, I can just go there and click O, and it changes the out point. So in point and out point can be specified in the project panel by hover scrubbing. However, you might think that hover scrubbing can get a bit annoying as you go over the clips all the time. You want to sort of turn it off or just have it when you want it available. The way to do that is to go to the panel menu up here and go down to where it says hover scrub. And we can disable hover scrub. And now when I go over the clips, it doesn't happen. But if I then want to get to hover scrubbing, so that I can set a new in point and out point for the clip, let's say these kids running backwards and forwards, if I hold the shift key, hover scrubbing is temporarily enabled. So I'm holding shift and I'm getting hover scrubbing. And if I still want to choose my in point just before that boy runs forward, I go forward and O. Just don't have your shift key down when you do your I and your O. So, for instance, if I go forward and I'm holding shift key and I do O, you'll see that nothing happens. So, you need to make sure that your shift key is not enabled when you want to set your endpoint. So, at the moment, I've got hover scrubbing off and I have to hold the shift key to get it on again with my mouse. But I can't do shift I and shift O. It has to be just I and O. Now, if I want to get to list view, rather than clicking down here and going back to list view, all I need to do is hold the shift key and the key right next to it, the backslash button, and that will toggle me between list view and icon view very quickly. And then hitting that tilde key or accent key, or for me, it's actually the apostrophe key, I can then minimize that back down, and then I do need to scrub it back down to a sensible size so I can see it. So that's hover scrubbing and setting in points and out points actually in the project panel which is a very big step forward. At the moment, my hover scrubbing's turned off. I'm just going to turn it back on again by going up to the panel menu, hover scrub, and hover scrub is actually back on again. So that when I go over my clips, I can go with them there. And they have got in points and out points specified. And if I were to double click on a clip, it still opens it up inside the source monitor, which is where we can do slightly finer adjustments if we find it easier. And I can still go backwards and forwards and I can still change those in points or out points either by taking the end and putting it backwards and forwards or by hitting O and snapping it to where my current time indicator or my playhead is. So, project panel, setting in points and out points, looking at hover scrubbing. In the next tutorial, we're actually going to have a little look in the source monitor and the project monitor because if we look at CS 5.5, there was a whole bunch of controls for going backwards and forwards and they've completely disappeared in Premiere Pro CS6. So what's going on there?